Hey everybody! In today's video, we're going to do a fun technique with word dies or stamps that I call vanishing point words. This is from a tutorial that we did a long time ago on Split Coast, and it's very, very simple. You're just going to create a vanishing point to draw lines from the bottom or the top of either a sentiment stamp or in my case the opening that I cut with a word die. And you will turn these into sort of three-dimensional words that look like almost like a bat signal from the 70s. I just love this retro look. It reminds me of my childhood. And this is such an easy technique to do with a bunch of things that we all already have. So I marked a point over on the lower right. This can be anywhere on the card. You can have your vanishing point go in any direction. In the tutorial on Split Coast, they actually had one sample where it was above and below a word, which was really, really neat. But I'm just going for the classic vanishing rainbow underneath the word. I think it's such a fun look. Now, when you have a die like this that has some sort of delicate parts that are left when you die cut the opening for the word, I put a piece of post-it tape behind the opening of the die just to keep those things all stuck down while I was drawing my lines. This is a cork-backed triangle. I like this because the cork grips the surface of my card and it doesn't move when I'm drawing the line. If you got halfway through this and your ruler slipped, you would have to start all over again. <laughs> so I don't have the patience for that, so I really like this particular ruler. I'm using a Copic Multiliner in a fairly thin point out of the set that I have, and just lining that up with every place that a letter sort of comes down and touches the imaginary line that that's sitting on. And you'll see in a little while why I wanted to work just using the negative space at first. If the die cut had been in the way, my line wouldn't have gone all the way to the edge of those openings where I'm creating little touch points for the lines. Now once it's all finished, you'll see it's dark down at the corner, so it covers up that mark that I made. So don't worry about that if that was bothering you <laughs> in the beginning. Now I will take this panel and I'll go ahead and glue it onto a card base for the coloring portion. This is so that I can use that opening to make sure everything is covered with marker and not have to worry about coloring on top of the word die. So if you did not choose black for your die cut like I did, it, this part would be really important. So I will put that down on the card front after removing the tape and make sure every little bit of it is stuck down. That's important as well. This is such a fun, like swirly die. I just love it. Now you could also, if you wanted to cover up that vanishing point with a sentiment strip, you could do that. I really like how graphic this looks. And so I don't think I'm going to be covering up that vanishing point or adding another sentiment. So I have my graphite markers. These are essential for these teeny little lines that I created because they have that super fine tip. And I'll just do them in rainbow order. Now I do have a coupon code for these markers. It will be down in the links below as well as on my blog. You can get 15% off with my code. And actually that 15% off is good for anything on their site. So have fun shopping for markers. Now, I, when I find a rainbow combination that I like, whether it's graphite markers, Copic markers, my Kareen markers, once I've established what I think of as my classic rainbow, I make a little mark on the marker so that I know which orange to pick, which yellow to pick, etc. So I highly recommend just putting a little mark somewhere. I do the same for my favorite skin tone markers. I mark those as well so that I can quickly grab them. I'm not really good at memorizing <laughs> the numbers or memorizing anything really. So this system just works a lot better for me. Now you can see that I'm able to color into the opening of the die cut 
so that I can make sure that the edges get all the way inked. And I'm also going to show you another place that you need to make sure you ink very well. But this is just so much easier to do with the negative space than it is with the die cut already in there. And then when you pop the die cut in at the very end, it's so satisfying because it just cleans everything up so beautifully. So I'll start my rainbow over again. If I had really been counting, <laughs> I could have done a complete second rainbow. This time I'll be one color short. But the cool thing is it ends with this fun turquoise blue. So it all worked out and I'm happy with that. You definitely couldn't do this with a wider brush marker. It would be a lot harder. Now it's also cute just in black and white, but see how the edges are a little bit white on the inside of the die cut. I'm going to go around and clean those up really quickly so that no white space even has a chance of showing once I get that die cut down in there. You'll just want to make sure all those edges are perfect. I remember Christina Warner one time said that clean and simple card making means that your details have to be executed perfectly because there's so little going on on the card. So it's little touches like these touching up those edges that makes a big difference on a clean and simple card. So I will paper piece this back together. The die cut was on black cardstock and I just think it looks so sharp with all that rainbow and lots and lots of white space. So I'll fit this back in, but see where the negative spaces for like the E, the S, the O, I will be putting white cardstock back into those where they are empty. And I'm missing my little eye and I have to look around for these little itty bitty pieces. <laughs> this is the only one on this die, but I kept all the pieces when I brought it over from my die cutting machine. And lo and behold, I told you that cork was sticky. It was stuck to the back of the cork on the back of my ruler. So I will grab that and put that into the eye space. But then, like I said, I'll fill the rest in with white cardstock as well. And that way the card is all the same level. It's all just a one layer card. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm having the horrific realization that I left that center bubble on the Y white. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and color that rainbow as well. <laughs> so it didn't quite dawn on me when I was doing this the first time that I needed to fill that in for a really complete look. But this is such an easy and fun technique with all sorts of things that you have. And it doesn't have to be words. It could be any shape. You know, an oval would make it look like a bat signal. So have some fun with that. Get creative and head over to my blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching.